My name is Bimlin Dujha. I'm the founder of this organization called Swetcha. You're based where? I'm based in New Delhi. I'm an environmentalist. So your your claim to fame maybe is in um, environmental issues and innovative approaches. So why don't you lay out some ideas about what are some envir environmental issues that you've tried to tackle and how you've done that? See, we need to understand that India right now, in the last almost two decades of trying to be a developed nation, a uh, nation is trying really hard to compromise on its environmental status or environmental well-being. In that race to prosperity or race to well-being, we've actually, uh, you know, almost 70 to 80 percent of our water is actually contaminated. Our forests have actually disappeared. Our air almost, uh, you know, there are there are 20 cities in India that actually uh, are are extremely extremely polluted. In New Delhi, almost 300 bad air days is what we got. Now, uh, for us, people like us, who are also active citizens, who are actually trying to raise this issue that environment is as important as development, as in development can perhaps go slower, uh, you can actually compromise, as in you need to build a metro, you need to build your infrastructure, you need to have industries, you need to actually have better GDP or better economic growth numbers, but not at the cost of ailing children, dying pregnant women, and, and ailing elderly in that sense. So, uh, our primary work right now is at two levels. One is to really make the government accountable because the government, both the central government or the state government, because India has a has a has very similar to America, has a different kind of a structure of governance, needs to be accountable. They are the ones who are actually custodian of our air, of our water. And the other is also that they we need to connect the conversation around the environment to public health because in a lot of times we only look at environment as a romantic subject. My desire of a blue sky is not just because it clicks a great Instagram photo, but a, 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 you know, a great blue sky also means cleaner air, means lesser and lesser children who will actually fall ill. Because if you actually have a data of a great GDP numbers, India becoming a superpower, and you actually chest thump about it, that's one set of data. The other set of data from Lancet report is that a million and a half people die every year because of air pollution issues. Now for us as citizens, or for our policy makers, what should actually be like? They should actually be more thrilled and to work on that superpower data more and to further their superpower agenda, or to really work on that entire 1.5 million people who are dying. And to first accept that that's a problem. Very unfortunately, just uh, you know, a fortnight ago, we were able to actually have a discussion on air pollution in our, in our parliament which has never happened in independent India. Uh, so it's good that politicians are actually talking about issues of pollution, uh, issues of air pollution, issues of water pollution, but they're doing very little about it. It's still about blaming each other for the current crisis rather than actually together solve this entire uh, problem that we're actually facing. So how does a developing economy like India make that balance? What are some innovative ideas that you can try? They're not making that balance, and that's been our main issue, that you know, we are actually blindly following something. We're not even following West, I would, I would fail to say that they're not even, like today, uh, I woke up in the morning and the air quality index here in St. Petersburg was actually 80, and in New Delhi it was 280, where the permissible limit is only 50. So developing economies need to really take a pause. We need to really, you know, wait for a bit and and look at what are we actually creating. We're talking about more than a billion people who are, actually don't have right to breathe, they don't have right to clean water, as in their basic human rights are getting violated in terms of their survival itself. Now, when we talk about innovation, we're not talking about rocket science. We talk about very, very fundamental, commonsensical issues of governance that needs to be addressed when we talk about issues of sustainability. Now, uh, you know, we, we actually need 100, uh, say, power plants, in, you know, because we need 24-hour electricity supply, but not at the cost of our trees, because that's what is actually happening. New Delhi does not need more shopping malls. It actually needs more forest cover. It, rather than actually building and, 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 and focusing on, on great infrastructure, we talk about innovation in conservation and innovation in terms of basic linkages that we need to actually establish between uh, human health, public health, which is individual health, public health, and issues of sustainability. Now, it's not rocket science to actually understand that bad water leads to actual health crisis, but we actually, as I said previously, that almost 70% of, uh, of India's water is actually contaminated as per government's own admission in that sense. 
So we need to really look at these things which are, which are staring at us, which are glaring at us, which tells us a different truth of India, about India, and not just about India, but several other developing nations in the world that actually are almost, also at, and at many levels, has become dumping ground. Dumping grounds of technology, dumping grounds in terms of, you know, that's where dirty production happens. And everyone is party to this. And in many ways, countries uh, in Europe or countries like America have actually played an active role, uh, knowingly or unknowingly, in creating these, these toxic hotspots. Of course, not directly participating, but in somewhere, this entire world economy has enabled this kind of a crisis that we actually see uh, in different parts of the world. And we need to also understand that this is not temporary and this is not romantic. This is not only about climate change. This also creates a different kind of a, uh, you know, the, if you're right now getting threatened by a refugee crisis in different parts of the world, imagine if entire Bangladesh actually drowns. Or if cities like Mumbai and Chennai, which you know, together would have around 40 million people living, if these cities go underwater because of climate change and because of other environmental reasons, what will that actually mean? So we're talking about a, a civil war kind of a situation eventually that will lead because of environmental crisis that we need to that needs to be addressed right away. The burden shouldn't only fall though on developing nations. The developed nations have had their own histories of uh, climate uh, of of pollution crises, and maybe we have the means now to overcome that. What's the responsibility of the developed nations to help the developing nations to with solutions? If you still look at per capita carbon consumption, uh, America, as much as it would have been its act, it is it is still at the top. An average American citizen, by you know, although looks as if lives a very sustainable life, or or looks uh, on the look of it, you might think that you know. It's clean air in St. Petersburg, so it's, everyone must be very, very responsible. Everyone would be a good citizen. That's not true. That's, you know, somewhere our, our, our average carbon consumption is extremely, extremely high. We need to look at that. Second is sometimes perhaps your production facilities might have ended or have ceased to exist in your own backyard, but it has actually shifted to somebody else's backyard. In this global economic world that we all live in, in this entire free trade world that we live in, a lot of dirty production businesses have actually moved to different parts of the world. So the law that applies in America should also apply in that American good that is actually built or made or constructed or produced or manufactured in Bangladesh or in Pakistan or in India or for that matter in China. You can't have double standards. You cannot have one rule that would apply to the waters of St. Petersburg and different set of rules that would actually apply to the waters of India in that sense. And we are all connected. We all are connected through our goods, through our technology, through our, through our, through our uh, journey to progress, and more than anything else, through humankind, as we all are so-called humanity. We all live in this free world, and therefore consider ourselves to be one world. And in that, we, it's, it's, a, it's a collective, comprehensive responsibility of both the nations, India and America, right now, because I'm in America and I'm from India, and of several other worlds in that sense. So the idea is not to just be preaching for Western nations to tell India or to China or to Bangladesh or to many other countries to, to behave in a particular way, but to actually help them in that particular journey. Because at the end of the day, if an average Indian starts living like an average American, there will be no planet, there will be nothing that will be left. And, and that can, we cannot have the excuse of American way of living to justify our flamboyant carbon footprint. And finally, if people come out to the community conversation that you're having tonight, what would they expect? I, I, I don't have a script, as in I'm actually going to have a free conversation about the issues that I actually face uh, back in India. You know, it's not easy to be an env environmentalist in this era because people think of you as an obstructionist because you actually stop this entire growth of the economy to happen. Uh, your enemies are not just your neighbors, your enemies are your state a lot of times, uh, big businesses. Uh, so I'm actually going to have this, uh, this conversation around how are we fighting those battles back, back home, how those fat battles need to be fought within our own communities or uh, in countries like America as well, because environmental issues remain, degrees might vary uh, everywhere in that sense. And also what are my learnings, what are my learnings from India and what are my learnings for fellow Americans here. Well, thanks so much for talking with me this morning. Pleasure.